First, you need to cut your strip to size. This is a 21 inch collar, so I will cut at the 23 inch mark to leave room for fold over. The D-rings in the lock will add another inch and a half when it's assembled. The next step is to bevel. Run your beveler over all four edges on the skin side, which is the front of the leather, and the flesh side, which is the back of the leather. Now we punch. Start by making your first hole about 1 4 inch from one end of the strap, then punch another hole 2 to 2 1⁄2 inches from the first hole you made. Now line up your two ends with each other and punch matching holes. You can measure if you want to double check the distance, but I prefer to eyeball it. Fold both ends over the D-rings and line the holes up to check if they are even. Now it's time for dye. First I like to go over the entire collar with a dauber, including all edges. You will want to dye the inside only where the leather folds onto itself, as there will be a visible space that doesn't touch the skin. After using the dauber to get most of the color on, I like to fold a paper towel and use the flat edge to smooth out any streaks and deepen the existing color. Once that dries, you'll want to add a leather finish or sheen. Dyes tend to dry out the leather, so you'll want to recondition it. Now you can burnish. I'm using a machine here, but a hand burnisher can be just as effective. You'll want to put a burnishing agent on the rough edges of the leather, and then use the grooves of the burnisher to smooth and round them. Last we assemble. Fold the leather over the D-rings and line up the holes. Snap the rivets through them and use the dome side of your setter to hammer the rivet pieces together, and repeat for the other side. Loop the padlock between the D-rings and secure. Now you have a finished padlock collar.